This is the Benefits Buzz Podcast, your weekly pulse on what's happening in the world of employee benefits. Brought to you by your friends at WEX, who believe in simplifying benefits for everyone. Now listen up, and let's get buzzed! Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Benefits Buzz. And on this week's episode, we are talking (laughs) about uh, a topic we all love to avoid, Kelsey, and that is crucial conversations. Yikes. Speak for yourself. I actually, you know, maybe it's my old age, but I have grown in my ability to have crucial conversations, and I actually think they're very, I, I get a lot out of them. I enjoy them. Oh, oh, I know they're important. I am a huge conflict avoider. And that that is something that I have self-diagnosed. And so while not everyone's like you, Kelsey, I know you love the thrill of a good juicy conversation. There's a lot of us out there that that totally freeze, freak out, or we approach these conversations in the wrong way and we get super defensive. And I can't wait to dive into it. I'm your host, Eric Pillow. I'm joined as always by Kelsey Berger, a co-host. But more importantly, we have an, a phenomenal guest. I'm not sure you can find a more uh, a qualified person uh, to, to, to be on this show. Her name is Barbara Hauser. She is the owner of Barbara Hauser Associates and a Crucial Conversations Master Trainer and Senior Consultant at Vital Smarts. Barbara, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, Eric. It's great to be here. Yes. Yeah, so small tidbit, Barbara and I have some, some past. <laughs> About eight years ago, uh, I actually went through um, Crucial Conversations training. Uh, and then after that training, I went through train the trainer training. And so I was trained to be a, a Crucial Conversation uh, trainer within my organization. And Barbara was the, the instructor professor and she was phenomenal. And so eight years later, when I wanted to do this episode, I remember, that's how good you were, Barbara. I remembered you like, I gotta have her on the show. So, so welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's bring this full circle for a second. The first Crucial Conversations training I went to, Eric led. Whoa! Wow. wow! I know there's a lot of uh, a lot of inception going on right here. So look at that! Look at that path that you created for us, Barbara. That's oh, awesome. I love that. Yeah, that's great. Well, let's talk about crucial conversations. There are probably some listeners, uh, our HR pros, who who know what it is, but it, and maybe they're not thinking of it in exact terms that maybe you were talking about crucial conversations. I mean, when you hear crucial conversations, like, well, that must be an important conversation. But I know Vital Smarts, and I know we have a really true definition about what crucial conversations is. Maybe let's set the tone by talking about, in your opinion, you know, Barbara, what is a crucial conversations as Vital Smarts would define it? Yeah, thank you so much for that question, Eric, because it does come up a lot. People, first of all, the, just, just the word crucial, right? Mm-hmm. Um, can can tend to put us into some kind of contraction. We say, "Oh, this must be like like you were saying. Oh, I gotta avoid this, or mm-hmm. you know, really don't want want the conflict." Um, the way we're thinking about it is a little bit different, though. So, first of all, I just like to set like a big context. Uh, we're all in conversations uh, every day about a multitude of things, and now we know better than ever that they can be remote, they can be written, they can be. Uh, they come in many sizes and shapes and forms. And, and, and what we've learned over the years through our research is that not all conversations have the same impact. Mm. Um, and so what we like to think of as crucial conversations are those conversations that matter. Um, and when we say that, people go like, yeah, like, uh. <laughs> so they, they, they make a difference in the outcomes we're producing in our lives that we care about um, and or they affect our relationships. Right. And so we say, you know, when the stakes are high, right, and there's, there's um, something we want to take care of, the conversation is at least partially crucial, right? Um, and not all of those are crucial because then again, we have conversations where with that other person, we have a lot of, a lot of agreement, uh, we're synced up. Um, mm-hmm. And so that doesn't tend to be crucial, but when we're disagreeing, when we're really at opposite ends of the continuum um, on an issue, that's the second ingredient. So um, some kind of disagreement or some kind of just distance in, in our views on, a, on an important topic with somebody we care about, and to make it worse, <laughs> we get emotional, right? Yeah. It's like, oh yeah. And a lot of that is a function of the first two, right? Because we care about our opinions, we 
identify with him. So when those three come together, I think of it as a perfect storm. Yeah. So like the three ingredients, if I remember, is like high stakes, right? A lot on Got the it. line, um, strong emotions, right? Something you're passionate about and then opposing opinions. And that's kind of the secret yeah. sauce of a crucial conversation. Totally makes sense. I get it. Right. Now, I remember one of the things from training a long time ago, and I want you to <laughs> help me with the step, but I remember one of the things that was really eye opening me from like, okay, I get it. You have crucial conversations. I know when I'm having these and you know, they, they happen here and there, but there was some like big stat about like how often crucial conversations take place in our daily lives. And we think of these big mo monumental conversations, but really they happen more often than we think, don't they? Yeah. I, you know, I, I guess I would have a yes and no for that. Right. Like, okay. like, like they happen more often than we're aware of. Ooh, okay. I would say it's absolutely the case. And why? Because a lot of times we're just, we're numb to them or we've learned to cope with them. It's like, um, you know, it might come up, uh, you know, three times in one sitting with my mother-in-law, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is not good. <laughs> and it great. feels like, oh, it's a forever thing. Um, and then, but, but what we find statistically is here's an, here's kind of an interesting thing. So they, we have dozens and dozens of conversations. As a matter of fact, in training, I used to do like a straw poll and say, well, how many conversations do you have every day? And people are holding their heads and saying, oh my God, you know, mm -hmm. um, and how many of them are truly crucial? Mm. But the point is, is, is even bigger than that. It's like, why do they matter so much? Cause their impact is so much bigger. And so it feels like, yeah, there are a lot more than we think, but the truth is they're probably fewer, mm -hmm. but bigger impact. And that's why we care. Sure. Gotcha. And I imagine that's why it's so important in, you know, today's workforce, especially with a lot of people still being virtual, you know, these crucial conversations um, are really relevant, really important to today's society, especially to those people who are in HR you know, who are trying to help all of these people who are probably still in somewhat of a virtual environment. I think we're slowly getting back to, you know, quote unquote normal. Mm -hmm. But um, what are some examples that you can think of that would be um, a crucial conversation that you would have in the workplace? Well, Kelsey, that's a great question. And, and you're right. Um, so I've been doing this work for about 15 years now. And I can, I can honestly say um, there are issues that we are hearing from people that really need to be dealt with now that we would never have mentioned 15 years ago. So racism, um, lack of diversity and belonging, uh, how we're treating each other. Um, we've actually um, have a couple of phrases that we use in crucial conversations. And uh, you alluded to it earlier, Eric, by saying, you know, I like to avoid things. You know, a lot of times we go to silence. Um, and then there's the verbal violence, which is on the other side, right? So um, just dealing with uh, some of the more contemporary issues, obviously in the workplace. Um, and that also brings up some of the more, the issues that have been with us forever. Like, um, you know, how do I, you know, how, how, do, I, how do I bring up uh, an accountability issue, for example, with a colleague when I don't have the authority um, to, to speak to these things? Or how do I point out that, um, the way we're dealing with the pandemic, for example, is not working for a majority of us at home. <laughs> and we don't even see the people who are making the decisions, right? So how do I bring that up? Um, so yeah, you're right. I mean, it, it runs the gamut. Um, and I think it, it, it really includes just about everything that, again, impacts our productivity, mm. impacts the way we uh, work together as teams, um, and frankly, you know, the conversations that are really going to generate the future that we all want. So big net, yeah. lots of conversations. Yeah, there's, there's so many to think about, right? It's the, the coworker you can't stand, the boss who's you just don't feel comfortable having that conversation with, or they're super intimidating, or some of those more really heavy conversations you, you started with, um, you know, whether it be diversity or racism, or whatever that's happening in the workplace, some really heavy conversations, right? And I think that you, when you think about the magnitude and the importance of these conversations, that's again, where my eyes always kind of were wide open. And right now we're really talking about how do we, how do we figure out what a crucial conversation is how do we identify them maybe let's start before we give them you know i don't want to say a silver bullet because it's not <laughs> this is a lot of work to make this happen let's talk about why people fail 
right? You you mm. kind of talked about um, you, you you talked about silence. Yeah, uh, you talked about verbal violence, and I remember that being a when people get in these situations, you know, human nature kicks in, you know, uh, and we, some people clam up, some people uh, puff their chests and get loud and start yelling. We just we're creatures like that, right? And are, are you know maybe expound on that or talk about how yeah. people just don't know how to engage in these conversations, yeah. but even though they know they're important. Yeah, I, I love I love the way you you call us creatures, right? <laughs> that's, that's exactly it, right? Mm -hmm. And 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 so I like to think about it as um, so so we're all human, mm -hmm. and the way we're wired, um, and fortunately for us, again over the years, um, all of the the investigation and research into how our brain works is helping us to understand and accept that we are wired to keep ourselves safe. Mm. And so from a real primitive, um, you know, base of the brain kind of uh, uh, reaction, it, this silent and violent, uh, verbal violent behavior seems really logical. <laughs> actually, Absolutely. Like, right? I need, to t I need to take care of myself. Which well, see, it sounds, like, it sounds like fight or flight, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. And it kicks in without us, without our permission. Mm. And then what happens is that we don't have access to the smart part of our brain. That's probably the sad part, right? <laughs> it's I don't know how many of you have had a flapping moment where you're like, you mm -hmm. walk away from a conversation and then you didn't know what to say in the moment. You got really that tunnel vision. And, and then all of a sudden you said, oh, why didn't I tell them? And fill in the blank. And yeah, or like the perfect zinger or the thing, yeah. the more educated response you should have said. Huh, yeah, right. right. And the answer to that is that we can't in that moment unless we train ourselves. Mm. So is this the stimulus gap response? Because I had a great leader once upon a time talk to me about, you know, stimulus gap response where there's a stimulus. And instead of, you know, where you're talking about your brain, you know, the fight or flight or your instinct mm -hmm. is to like go, you create a gap and you yeah. stop, you pause, you wait, and then you take time to formulate and then you respond. Is that part of this exactly. whole conversation? Absolutely. Absolutely. The first, um, kind of one of the first skills that uh, we understand is, is, is helpful here is just that level of self-awareness. And, um, and a lot of times we can only get that from a little bit of introspection, like we're saying, like, why did I get so upset? What triggered me here? Um, how come I'm, you know, not saying anything when I really care about this issue? And so we, we, we begin by um, giving ourselves our, and our brains some really interesting questions to ask, like, what just happened? Right. right. I, I like that. Care. And I definitely see, I definitely am, you know, I'm imagining my conversations. I'm, ha I'm having the ones that I go to, you know, to uh, flight, right, where I clam up mm -hmm. or I'm not confident enough to have that tough conversation. And then I have ones where, and sometimes this happens more, I hate to admit it, more in the home life where I'm much more ready to, to, to you know, fight. I hate to use that word because it's not yeah. talking physical, but I'm much more ready to, to engage in that conversation and maybe not the best way. And so I think that we've identified when they happen, the, the pitfalls for everyone, we're all human, right? We have that reptilian brain of ours that just goes to those things. So maybe let's, let's change, let's, let's, let's enlighten some minds now, Barbara. Let's talk about how do we, how do we, how do we appropriately start to engage in these conversations? And I know we don't, we only have so much time. I know this is like a two day course, so I will have to keep it super, yeah. super succinct, but, but what are some tips to start when you want to have this crucial conversation or you engage in one to get it off on the right you know, foot, so to speak? Yeah. Wow. That's a, that's a great question, Eric. And again, we can kind of zoom out and I, if we do for a minute, it's just part of it is um, getting to know ourselves a little bit better. Mm. So there are like a, a series of at least um, three three different skills. Number one is to be able to, you know, pick up a, a, a situation in our lives that we're not 100% satisfied with, um, that we notice could be improved. Because we've got kind of a law, and the law is, um, you know, anytime you're not getting what you want, and this might sound crazy to people. It's like, well, I don't get everything I want, mm -hmm. but we have the right to be satisfied, right, in our relationships and in the way we we work. So anytime I'm not satisfied and not getting what I want, I want to ask myself, is there a conversation 
um, that's not been held or hasn't been held well that's that's in the way. So first of all, it's like just really noticing in our lives um, where it is that we might be stuck. And then one of the big things is, okay, so what conversation do I need to have? <laughs> mm. And that's that's a cool question to ask too, because sometimes it's like one thing that happened, like somebody interrupted you in a meeting, for example, and you say, oh yeah, that's what I need to talk about. Because if I if I fix that, we're gonna we're gonna be good. Move on. Or sometimes it's you know a pattern of behavior, like somebody's been doing stuff that's caused you to think, oh man, I don't know if I can rely on them or not. Um, it, which points to another one of the skills is to realize that when I come to conclusions about things that are happening in my lives, um, it's based on my interpretation of the world. We call mm. it facts and stories, right? So we learn to we learn to get our emotions under control and get us um, primed to actually be in dialogue with the other person uh, when we realize yeah it's maybe there's another side to the story um, and then and then sometimes it's it's um, you know fessing up to the fact that hey I don't trust you tough conversation that's really tough yeah mm -hmm. right uh, but if it's the right conversation then um, then it will open up possibilities. So we talk a lot about getting the skill of, um, you know, exploring what is the conversation that's that's getting in the way. So lots of work on ourselves. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's so the, easy. To, it's so easy to blame the other person. The right? like, so, yeah, I'm never, it's never my fault. It's that person. No, that's that's smart, right? Like figuring out how we're part of the equation yeah. and what we want to like that. And you would, you'd be surprised at how, how many folks do come to, um, you know, a skill skill building kind of training waiting for that moment, right? When do I get to uh, pin it on the other person? Uh, but once we, 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 we actually get become aware, lots of doors open. Um, and then the next kind of set of skills is how do I say it? Mm. And, um, and I find people just so appreciate having um, a guideline, having it like a protocol, right? Like, because there is a right way and a wrong way. Um, to initiate a, a conversation on a tough subject. Can you give us, can you dig a little bit deeper on that and maybe give us just like what a short version of that protocol might right. be? Yep. I know it's a two day training. I know, but it's is okay. there like a, <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> the but cliff notes? A, yeah. So, so the way I like to think of it is um, uh, share, tell, ask. Mm. So the first thing I want to do is I want to share my eyes. I want to share what I've seen. So if I'm, let's just take a mother-in-law for example, because I am one, right? <laughs> and I'm and I'm and I'm hoping my my sons-in-law feel comfortable coming to me, and they may say something like, "Hey, mother-in-law, you know, I need to talk to you about something." You're going, "Whoa, all right." Um, uh, and I'll and I'll give you a true example. My son-in-law came to me and said, um, "You know, my my wife and um, and the kids are going to be visiting you next next week." And I'm going, yeah, cool, Rhett, like, what's up? And he said, um, you know, in the past, you've been really generous with them and giving them gifts and stuff like that. And I go, yeah, <laughs> really love that. <laughs> then I, I was thinking, where this is going yes, already. Here, yeah. right? <laughs> and then he shared with me just really honestly. So, th so that would be the share, the share part, like this is what's going on. And then he told me how he felt about that. And he said, you know, I'm really kind of concerned that they might get to um, view you as, um, n you know, not just their grandma, but somebody who's, you know, appeasing them and giving into their whims. And I, I wouldn't like that to happen. <sighs> and then before he asked me to do something different, he said, how, how, how does that land for you? How, how do you see it? Mm. So immediate invitation to dialogue. So it's share, tell, and then ask the other person to come along with you. Um, and those three skills, um, as opposed to what we might tend to do, which is call somebody up and say, hey, how come you're spoiling my kids? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, and I yeah. love the part too where, you know, he opens it up and asks you, how does that land for you? Yeah. Because I go back to something you said earlier on where you said um, you might be telling yourself stories. So it's opening it up for, their interpretation versus just your interpretation okay. of what is actually taking place. So that's probably a very critical step, but yeah. something I noticed in that story. Yeah. And you've landed on something really important. Um, 
Kelsey, and that is that the purpose of a crucial conversation is a lot of times people come and say, you know, I just really want to, you know, fix this problem and so forth. And that's important. But um, the real purpose of a conversation is to get some common understanding. Mm. Right, we call it a pool of shared meaning, which is kind of a long way to say. <laughs> you know, just get, get stuff out on the table, right? And you can't do that in a monologue. Right? That would be just me telling you, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah. No, that's good. I remember that pool of shared meaning. I uh, that's that's great because I think you're right. Like, what do you want? Like, there was a lot of like, what do you want the outcome to be, right? Like, what do you want to get from this conversation? Is it a better working relationship? Is it a resolution to a problem? And most of the time. You know, the issue isn't a, you don't want the same thing. It's how you go about getting it for, for the most part sometimes is what we find a lot. And so I, I and thank you for doing the, the tell, share, ask. It's such a powerful thing because I think the most scary part about crucial conversations is getting into that conversation, like starting that conversation. And at least if you have that in your back pocket, you have a much likely, you know, better likelihood of having a, what I would say, fruitful dialogue, like you said, right? And I think those are great things. So make sure listeners, you've jotted that down and we'll include them in the, in the uh, podcast notes as well. But, uh, but I love that. So maybe let's, um, let's focus on where do you see, you know, if I'm putting myself in the shoes of a, an HR professional, like this is a huge chunk of their job. People come to them with issues around people, around situations, around teams, and they have to figure out how do I help mitigate, navigate, you know, am I the moderator? What's my role here? And so could you maybe give a suggestion on, you know, how, you know, for all of our listeners, where do you see crucial conversations fitting to the piece? Is it about educating everyone? Is it about first educating themselves and having them be a coach? How would you encourage them to sort of think about crucial conversations in, in their role? Wow. Great, great question. And my mind goes, um, and initially to kind of big picture, but I think what we, we can zoom in then is like, um, for, first question is kind of what kind of culture mm -hmm. uh, do you want, right? Um, because people do come uh, a lot of times to the training and, and from well-meaning HR directors, right? <laughs> Saying, why don't you go to that training and maybe you'll get fixed, right? Maybe it will <laughs> sure. be able to, to yeah. straighten you out. And, and, there's, and there's some virtue in, um, yeah, helping people to get skills that they don't necessarily uh, get from any other uh, part of their education, right? So we don't get taught to have these kind of conversations at home and at elementary school, high school, college, whatever. So recognizing that they're, they are, and I like to think of them as leadership skills, right? So there's a skill building piece to it. Um, there's a piece around what do we value? Uh, do we value... Um, transparency? Do we value um, diverse opinions on subjects? So is this aligned with our culture, right? Um, or is it maybe there's an initiative somewhere um, that depends on uh, having more people involved, uh, more people's viewpoints being represented. So there are lots of different ways that we find um, our clients actually leverage uh, the skill set to help them get what they're going for. So maybe it's a, a culture of safety. We've done a lot of work with uh, mm -hmm. healthcare organizations and uh, you know big uh, and industrial kinds of organizations where safety is really really important. Um, uh, quality, uh, for example. So we know that all of the big strategic outcomes that we're looking for can can benefit uh, from better skill sets. Um, in these different areas. Yeah, no, that's great. And and I think that's really good direction. You know, I think I, I like taking a step back and looking at the big picture of, of what you want to accomplish and what does this mean? So I, I appreciate your thoughts here. You know, uh, I wish this podcast was 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 longer because I know there's tons <laughs> that we could dive into more, but there may be a lot of people going, you know, okay, you got me hooked here, Barbara. I want to learn more about how I either one, how I can be a better crucial conversationalist. I mean, this is something that I use uh, all the time. I wish I used it better. I use it at work and I use it with my wife and my kids, believe it or not. So it's multi purposeful. But then also, like, okay, I need to be better at this as myself, you know, but also, again, as an HR pro, like, 
I want to help my leaders. I want to help my employees uh, have these difficult conversations because if they don't, they fester. I love that word yes. fester, but that's what happens, right? And so if they want to learn more, Barbara, about crucial conversations, about the philosophy, I know this is all based mm -hmm. on tons of research. Yes. Um, and so it's really proven. Where can they go to learn more or even engage with you? Yeah, thank you so much. Um, well, vitalsmarts.com. Um, and, and I would, um, lots of different free resources on that website, okay. um, including something I'm gonna pitch because it's so good. Um, if you have any room at all in your uh, inbox for another newsletter, uh, but this one, uh, the Crucial Skills newsletter is, is chock full of real, concrete, everyday examples. And as a matter of fact, uh, you can actually write in and the authors and our um, font leaders on our staff are really open to answering those questions. So Love that's that. a way to interact um, mm -hmm. yeah, with, with the resources. And um, the book, of course, uh, Crucial Conversations, uh, Skills for Talking When the Stakes Are High. Um, there's an online assessment as well. Um, and <laughs> here's, here's a twist for you. What I like to do is to recommend that people have their partner or their colleague or maybe even their manager, uh, go on the website and take the assessment thinking of them. Oh, right? I, well, I like it because it's a, a specific example, right? Something yeah. that, yeah, I like that, cool. Yeah, and then you can get something back and say, oh, like to your point, Eric, I, I, you know, I'm, str I'm strong in these different areas and here are some areas. Because I do wanna, um, I do wanna say that, um, you know, crucial conversations are not held with a script. Mm, right uh -huh. and so you can pull the skills out it's like a toolkit right? right you can pull them out and say you know one of the things that really trips me up is you know trying to create some mutual respect with certain people um, and so you pull out that skill set and you can use it independently like that too so that's awesome it. i've learned so much in this i mean i know at the beginning i was like <laughs> oh i love crucial conversations <laughs> like i want to believe that i'm really good at them but i think i need a sticky note on my computer that says share tell ask Nice. So I can just continuously remember over and over again the process about how to do them well. But thank yeah. you so much. It was it was so great to meet you. I know Eric's met you before, awesome. but it was it was such an awesome podcast, and I hope everybody learned something today. Well, thank you so much, Kelsey. It's a pleasure to meet you, and Eric. Great to reconnect with you. Um, kind of speaks to the power of how these skills anchor us and bring Absolutely. us together as a community. Yeah. Absolutely. It's it's certainly changing lives. Uh, it's stuck with me this whole time, and I know it'll stick with our listeners as well. So good to see you again, Barbara, and thanks nice again for coming too. on the show. Take You're care. You're welcome. Thanks. Wax is in the business of simplifying benefits for everyone. Now, although we certainly hope our podcast sparks some aha moments, like that was pretty cool, but of course we cannot provide legal investment or financial advice. And well, therefore, nothing shared in this podcast should be interpreted as such. We encourage you to seek out appropriate professional advice regarding your plans. Hey, congratulations. You made it through our disclaimer. <laughs> Thanks for listening.